It's cold, damp, and wet outside. You are in a hurry for something hearty and healthy. Stay tuned as we've got you covered in this episode of Mission Community Nutrition. Welcome to another episode of Mission Community Nutrition. We are presenting a two-part series entitled Soups and Stews, Hearty and Healthy in a Hurry. In this part of the series, we'll be preparing stews that are good for you, inexpensive to prepare, freeze well for the future, help keep you hydrated, and can give your immune system a boost. Again, and unfortunately, we are still in the middle of the pandemic. However, Bring along your fork and join us virtually in the kitchen for this episode, Stews, Hearty and Healthy in a Hurry. The first item on today's menu is a hearty and healthy yet tasty beef stew. Here to prepare today's recipe is our chef, Scott Franklin. Scott, what are the ingredients needed to create this dish? Thank you, Autumn. Today, we will be using beef stew meat, bacon if desired, fresh onions, carrots, celery, tomatoes, potatoes. We chose white today, but you can use different types of potatoes, whatever you may have. We'll need salt and pepper, fresh cut parsley, Worcestershire sauce, tomato paste, mushrooms, green onions, bay leaves, garlic, avocado oil, beef stock, a little red wine if so desired. We are gonna be using a corn mixture with corn and peppers. And we're gonna start off by dusting the uh, beef mixture into some organic flour. And start our oil getting warm. So we're gonna brown this beef. So start off with a little oil and a hot pot. And while that is heating up, and you'll know when it heats up because the oil will start to move around in a little bit and the pan will look kind of like a, a creek. And um, so while that's heating up, I will take our beef. I'm going to dump it in our organic flour. I'm going to season it right now with a little salt and a little pepper. I'm going to try to get a little bit of salt onto every single piece of beef. Same with the pepper, just a little toasting of pepper. Now, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to mix it all up and get it nice and coated in the flour. Okay, now that that's ready, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to add it to our hot oil. Shake off as much of the flour as possible. Now, we're basically just browning the outside of the meat and we're cooking a little bit of the flour that is going to end up being a thickening agent for us later. So it's going to give us two different purposes. One, it's going to help the meat get a little brown. And uh, number two, it's going to help thicken up the whole process. Now that we've browned our meat a little bit, I'm going to add our bacon. Stir that around just a little bit. And now we are going to add the liquid. We are going to add our beef stock. And our red wine, if desired. 
At this point, I'm gonna stir to get all the good cooked bits of bacon and beef off the bottom of this pan and let it flavor our stew. At this point, we're going to add our bay leaves, fresh garlic, and a little salt and pepper to the stew. We're gonna bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and simmer it for about two hours until the meat's all tender. Besides stew meat and fresh vegetables, what are other cuts of meat and types of vegetables that can be used in this recipe? I'm glad you asked that question. So usually when you buy stew meat, it's very, very inexpensive because it's pieces and trimming pieces from other cuts of beef. So it can be anything from ribeye pieces all the way down to top round and sort of anything in between. So a good rule of thumb when it comes to stew meat is you cook it for a long time so you can use tougher pieces of meat, usually the round category, the eye of round, top round, those are all really good stew meats, but you can also use really anything you want. You can use sirloin steak. I've even made it with ribeye steak before. The higher end meat you use, the better flavor you actually get. And as far as vegetables go, uh, certainly fresh vegetables are always desired, but you can use kind of whatever you have. You can use frozen vegetables. You can use vegetables out of a can. Really, it's whatever you have. So now we've been simmering our beef for about two hours. Now it's time to add all of our vegetables. We start with onions, carrots, celery, fresh tomatoes, potatoes, our green onions and our mushrooms. To spoon in our tomato paste. A little bit of Worcestershire. And our corn mixture. Now we're gonna stir this around, get it good and mixed. And we're gonna cook this for about 45 minutes until the vegetables are done. So now that we've cooked for our additional hour, we are going to remove our bay leaf, discard it, dish up our beef stew, and add a little garnish of some fresh cut parsley. And call it good. That looks fantastic, Scott. Let's review the ingredients for today's beef stew. This recipe will create approximately 12 servings and you will need two pounds stew meat or meat of choice, three slices bacon, two cups red wine, two tablespoons flour, one tablespoon avocado oil, three onions chopped, four carrots peeled and sliced, four stalks celery, salt, pepper, six cloves chopped garlic, half of a cup tomato paste, two fresh tomatoes chopped, 12 cups beef broth, two tablespoons Worcestershire sauce, four bay leaves, eight green onions chopped, 10 mushrooms, any kind, two pounds potatoes chopped, half cup fresh parsley for garnish. The second item on today's menu is a curried lentil stew. 
Scott, what are the ingredients for this dish? Autumn, for this dish, we will need lentils. We actually got dark green French organic lentils that we've been soaking overnight, so they're ready to go and they're soft. We have uh, fresh cut onions, we have fresh cut carrots, we have leeks, garlic, curried powder, we have a bouquet garni, we have coconut milk, lemon juice, salt and pepper, butter, avocado oil, and our immunity boosting chicken stock. So we're gonna start with putting butter in, a little bit of oil, and then we are going to add our onions. and carrots, and leeks, and garlic, and about two tablespoons of our curry powder. We're gonna mix all this up, and we're just gonna keep cooking this for about nine or 10 minutes until the vegetables soften up a little bit. And just keep rotating it. You're gonna see that the onions start to get translucent and the leeks will shrink up quite a bit and release some moisture. Now that our vegetables are soft, we are going to add our lentils. And our immune boosting chicken stock. We're also going to add our bouquet garni. A little salt. A little pepper. and some lemon juice. We're gonna bring all this to a boil, we're gonna let it simmer, and we're gonna check back on it in about 45 minutes. Scott, does curry have a spice to it? And if so, are there different varieties that they could use if they don't want this dish to be as spicy? So all curry comes from a combination of spices and peppers. So most curries have an amount of spice to them naturally. Um, that's just kind of the nature of that. Sometimes you can get away with a little mild spice when it comes to yellow curries. They're usually a little bit milder and sometimes green curries. But the nature of curry is that it is made from pepper so it definitely has some spice. But in this dish, um, unless you are extremely sensitive to spice, you will notice that it just has a really nice warm flavor. Now that we've cooked our lentil stew for about an hour, we've got the vegetables and the lentils all very soft. We're going to remove our bouquet garni, discard it. We're going to add our coconut milk, give it a nice stir. Now what we wanna do is blend this to a somewhat of a smooth consistency. So we have a couple of ways that we can do that. In the professional environment, we use what's called an immersion blender or a stick blender. And what this allows you to do is to blend food in the pot that it's cooking in. You may not have one of these. If you don't have one of these, you probably have a regular blender. So you can do the same thing in a regular blender. What you wanna do is fill the blender about halfway full with your soup, put the lid on, and when you go to blend it, blend it very quickly in just little switches like that until you get it blended and then add it back to the soup and do that a couple of times. What we're looking for here is uh, to lightly blend this so we get a little bit of a smooth consistency, but we still leave some big chunks so it still retains the stew-like quality. So here we go. And 
just moving through this. And you'll notice it's getting creamier and creamier. Okay, so we are lightly blended. We still have a good consistency. It's very thick and it's ready to serve. Here we have our curried lentil stew. Enjoy. Smells fantastic, Scott. Great job once again. Let's review the ingredients of today's recipe for curried lentil stew. This recipe will serve approximately six people and you will need three onions chopped, three leeks chopped, three carrots peeled and chopped, two tablespoons butter, two tablespoons avocado oil, eight cups chicken stock, two cups lentils, soaked, bouquet garni, one tablespoon peppercorns, one 16 ounce can coconut milk, a quarter cup fresh lemon juice, three tablespoons yellow curry powder. Up next, let's hear once again from our partnered dietitian, Jessica Bean. Thank you, Scott and Autumn. These dishes look delicious, and I can't wait to go home, grab these ingredients, and try them. It looks simple, fresh, healthy, and with all of these ingredients, they're nutritious, they bring different vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, which actually protect our cells. So let's examine these different foods and really share the benefits together. When it comes to beef stew, Beef has different benefits, and while we don't want to overdo beef, beef is a great source of iron. It's also a really great source of amino acids. We get protein and collagen from the beef. And when it comes to iron, iron is good for our hemoglobin, which helps carry oxygen around to our entire body from our lungs. So if we are struggling maybe with tiredness or with fatigue or maybe that brain fog, it might be related to iron deficiency anemia or potentially B12 deficiency anemia, both of which can be helped by consuming beef. So if you incorporate more beef into your diet, that can actually bring more energy and better um, fuel to your entire body. Some of the other benefits of eating beef are that it can help the B vitamins provide energy. They can help boost your immune function, improve your digestive function, help your skin, your eyes, your nervous system. So you really do want to incorporate beef for many of its added benefits. Phosphorus actually helps with energy conversion. Zinc helps boost immune system as well as aid in healing. And so even if you're going to have the beef, go for these lean cuts of beef like what we're using and showing you in this beef stew so it can be less cholesterol, less saturated fat, and better for your heart health. And some of the other ingredients that we've added into this beef stew that you get that additional immunity boost from, onions, carrots, celery, pepper, garlic, tomatoes, the broth, the bay leaves, the mushrooms, the parsley. There's so much goodness in this stew that you will receive the benefit if you really take it to heart and enjoy it, literally. All right, curried lentil soup. Let's talk about some of the benefits of lentils first and foremost. So there's different types of lentils with different variations of color. It can range anywhere from yellow, red, green, brown, or black lentils. And all of them have slightly different flavor profiles, unique compositions of antioxidants, and those good healthy plant chemicals that help protect against cancer and are anti-inflammatory neuroprotective effects against our nerves. So if you get variety of lentils, you will also get the variety of the benefits from the lentils. So lentils are a really inexpensive way to have a meat substitute, if you will, and get a variety of nutrients. So you get 
a lot of zinc, potassium, magnesium, and B vitamins, again, that help provide immunity boost as well as energy. Lentils are a really great plant-based source of protein and iron as well. So when you get the lentils, lentils have about 20 grams of protein in one cup and have about 16 or so grams of fiber in one cup too. So not only do you get the benefit of having rich amino acid source for your fuel and your energy, but also it helps your gut health, your digestion, moving things through the bowel to keep your um, system functioning the best it can with the fiber. Lentils also protect against chronic diseases. So here are some of the benefits. It helps your heart by protecting against heart disease, lowering that bad cholesterol, improving your blood pressure, as well as if you maybe struggle with type 2 diabetes or maybe you're pre-diabetic, it can improve your blood sugar levels and your insulin sensitivity. So you do want to load up on the lentils. And lastly, I want to talk about curry because it is absolutely a superstar ingredient in this recipe. So there's different types of curries. They can range in color from red, yellow, and green. They all have different flavor profiles similar to that of the lentils, different health benefits, and they have different anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antibacterial properties. They help lower cholesterol, improve blood pressure, help with blood sugar, um, boost metabolism, help your respiratory function. So if you can try to improve more curries into your food, you will reap immeasurable benefits. So as you can see with all of the ingredients that we have made with these wonderful recipes, they're easy, they're nutritious, they're simple, they're at your fingertips at the market. You can incorporate them and have fun and try new things. Be creative in your health journey. Don't get bored or stuck. Try those new recipes so that you can really enjoy the benefits of healthy eating and an invigorated, energized lifestyle. Here to provide awareness on the quality and quantity of the ingredients used in preparation of today's dishes, as well as insight on their costs, is our colleague, Jen Moss. Making these hearty recipes that Chef Scott has shown us today doesn't have to break the bank. While these recipes are full of wonderful ingredients, there are ways to shop for them and substitutions to make them even more affordable. Getting enough protein in your diet is important for staying strong and healthy. The meat section of the store can be overwhelming, but following a few tips can make a big difference in sticking to your food budget. Outsmart the meat department. As Chef Scott mentioned, using any kind of stew meat will work for this recipe. As long as you give it plenty of time to cook, it will be tender and delicious. Stores often package stew meat at a lower price as it contains smaller pieces of multiple cuts of meat that can't be sold individually. These are a great choice for today's recipe. When buying chicken and other poultry, try buying it with the bone in. This reduces the price per pound. Grocery stores often have a manager's special section in the meat department. These packages are marked down for quick sale and can be frozen or used right away without comp compromising the quality. Buying meat in larger quantities will also bring down the price per pound. You can freeze extra portions and use it next time or plan two meals with the same meat in the same week. Consider canned or frozen. You can use the canned or frozen version in any recipe that calls for meat. Canned or frozen chicken, fish, and shellfish are great alternatives to buying the fresh, more expensive version. Canning and freezing preserves nutrients and freshness without compromising quality. Look for meats, poultries, and seafood that are frozen or canned without added fat, salt, or sugar. Go meatless any day. Plant-based alternatives to meat are often less expensive. Beans are a superfood and very affordable. They are packed with fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Consider substituting beans into recipes that call for meat. By keeping the other ingredients the same, you can retain the flavor and feel of the recipe. By buying dried beans and soaking them overnight before using them, you can save even more money. If you do purchase canned beans, buying larger cans and freezing what you don't use will save you money as well. Tofu and tempeh can also be substituted for meat, and they take on the flavor of all the rest of the dish without overpowering it. Look for firm or extra firm tofu. Stretch your meal. Adding other ingredients to your meat recipe can make the meat go farther and still retain the flavor. 
Adding lentils to your taco meat is an inexpensive way to make your recipe go farther. Beans in your meatloaf make it go farther without compromising protein. It even adds some extra fiber and vitamins and minerals. Finding less expensive ways to get quality protein in your diet doesn't have to be hard. Have fun cooking and enjoy being creative as you explore these great recipes. Jen, thank you so much for the insight on today's dishes. To find the recipes used on today's show and further information, please visit www.nutritiouscommunity.com. Support for Mission Community Nutrition comes from the following. Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, Washington State University Extension, Spectra, City of Federal Way.